Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the host of WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Icolite for sponsoring this episode. Icolite do a huge range of housings, ports, and strobes um, available for a wide variety of cameras. Um, so please check them out at icolite.com. I'm very happy to be joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, I haven't seen you for a while. You must have been diving. Uh, very little diving, but a fair amount. I've done a reasonable amount of underwater photography. Yeah, and I have dived good. outside the UK, which was nice. Going to, yeah. uh, going to dive in Sardinia in Italy. Managed to get uh, um, four dives in there. Two from the wow. shore, two from the boat. But it, amazing to be in warm, clear water <laughs> again. Yeah, uh, and, and also photos where you take the photo, you adjust it in Lightroom, and there's no, there's not even one speck of backscatter to clean up. Wow. Um, yeah, which, I, having dived in the UK for pretty much, you know, eighteen months solid. Now, it's pretty rare you take a, a British picture with flash and don't have to clean up some backscatter somewhere in it. So it was amazing. You take pictures of the bed. It's like, what? That's it? There's nothing, <laughs> nothing to spot? <laughs> um, I can't say I'm not jealous. Um, mm. it's, um, so what I thought we could chat about today um, is in response or, or I, I was, was triggered by a thread on the um, WebPixel forum, which um, mm. is talking about how long strobes last. And I, I thought that was a really interesting question. So, so... <laughs> Um, how long did strobes last? Right. How long did strobes last, Alex? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's definitely a how long is the peach the string question. Mm. I, I would preface this discussion by making the important point that light is absolutely critical in under, in photography of any type, and the main light that we use to light our under well, the majority of our underwater pictures is our strobe light. Yeah. And any photographer that you know, invest in expensive camera gear, expensive diving, expensive everything, and then yeah. wants to to scrimp and shave, save on their lighting, yeah. I think is making a, a mistake. It is always the place, if you're going to invest money, invest it in the lighting. Yeah. So I, I'd really encourage people to, you know, to, to invest properly. And if that means, you know, replacing something as it ages, definitely. Now, electronics have definitely become a lot more reliable that control flash guns. Um, and there are no doubt that there are certain brands out there that amongst the community clearly work better than others and, and models as well. You know, I can yeah. think of several well-known brands of strobe manufacturer where some of their models are incredibly tough and go on and on and on and on. Yeah. And some of their models seem to break all the time. Yeah. Um, and others, you know, they've got others of with one model have generated a really strong reputation for being, um, you know, go on forever and then replacement models come along and maybe they're not quite the same in that respect. Yeah. So it does take, I think it's quite a complicated picture. And then within that, there is some individual variability in that you can buy the strobe that everyone tells you is the most reliable strobe and it's not the most long lasting. I, I think the other, the other thing just sort of before we, is that in general, um, when we're selecting, when, we, when we're choosing equipment, um, you know, most people will have the same set of strobes over several probably iterations of camera and house. So, so while you may change your upgrade your camera and your housing because technology improves in cameras or, or so on and so forth, um, typically your strobes don't. So, so it's almost worth investing the extra money in in the strobes at the beginning um, and accepting that they are going to outlast your 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 cameras. Um, I think that's a that's a reasonable place you want to be. And certainly, if you've got a strobe that isn't outlasting in terms of last outlasting your cameras, then I would query whether that's been a, been a been a good purchase. You know, I think it's a, it's it's probably it's, you've either you've either bought the wrong strobe or the strobe itself is is not a terribly um, good model. So yeah. So uh, yeah, there is variability in that, and I I completely agree with with that. Um, I think the next area that can keep strobes working well is making sure that what's powering them is the mm. best available. Yeah. And some strobes use battery packs, other strobes use, you know, double A batteries. Some are now beginning to go over to lithium batteries. But whatever the, the, the system you're using, understand how to look after that those batteries and have some idea about life's you know life's um life length of those. Yeah. And certainly if you've got the simplicity of double A batteries, they are well worth replacing those sets of rechargeables. Um, you know, on a reasonably regular basis so you're not using you know you've not got a 10 year old strobe and you've got 10 year old double a's inside running it you yeah, know you, yeah. that can make a big difference 
and battery chemistry is also something that, that I mean, and it varies from chemistry to chemistry and how you store them. You know, consult, um, Alex mentioned lithium and, and lithium perhaps uniquely doesn't like being stored at particularly full, full um, charge. Um, whereas most other batteries quite like being stored at full charge and most of them benefit from a periodic recharging whether you're using them or not. There's lots of technology on this and really, really it's worth digging down into that and seeing seeing you know what what's going to work best for your mm -hmm. cameras but again with, with your strobe there's no point in, in in buying an expensive strobe that you expect to last for a long time and then running on batteries that that aren't mm -hmm. giving it a chance to work so, mm -hmm. so absolutely and um, i think possibly we should also when we're talking about cost of strobes factor in the cost of replacement battery packs they are definitely expendable even whether they're triple a's or whether they're a bespoke battery pack at some time you're going to need to replace them and that's that's yeah. one of the one of the costs of and there's sure. a big cost difference in replacing a bespoke battery absolutely. pack which yeah. are usually very expensive and yeah. a set of double a's which are usually very very cheap yeah. Um, yeah. i think yeah. um, a point i would make is that Flash guns tend to be, although there's, I, I think I always think the flash gun is the most high performance part of our system. You know, you're putting this huge amount of energy out, but mm. because it's a relatively simple thing to make an electronic flash gun, they are very reliable. Mm. And I, I've got I've just, you know, I keep them in, in Sardinia, actually, where we just were. I have a pair of SB102 Nikon flash guns, the big round orange ones um, from... I guess they were probably introduced in 83, 84, mm. um, and they still work fine. They take C cells, big, big ones, but I've got some relatively modern rechargeable C cells that I run them on. Um, mm. They've only got full power and quarter power as settings for power, so they're not the most flexible. But for off-camera strobe shooting or when you, you know that you can adjust your technique to deal with the fact that you can just fire them on full or fire them on quarter power or whatever you, you choose to use them on, um, they're good. So. Old flash guns do tend to keep working, mm. but over time, particularly with the amount of photography we do these days, definitely the tubes can begin to suffer. Mm. And I think that's partly because some of the older flash guns, they were designed in the film era when mo for most divers, a photography dive was 36 clicks. Yep. And maybe you did, if you were an intensive dive, you did 100 dives a year. So yep. your flash gun had to do, 360 flash or you know 3600 flashes you know in a whole year yeah. nowadays you've got divers who are diving more and taking you know i i know people do 200 plus pictures on a dive oh yeah all with flash so the yeah. flash guns are being put through the mill to a level that they you know some of the older designs probably weren't ever envisaged for you know yeah. manufacturers of course you know think about how much a product's going to be used when designing it and you can always spend more over engineer more make it more complicated make it more expensive but you tend to design a product for its intended use so i think some of the older flash guns that were designed pre-digital or in the early days of digital when people maybe hadn't thought about how photographers might change mm. um, i would say another thing that can age a flash gun is if you're always running the flash gun absolutely at full power that's oh, yeah. going to put more stress on it than if you're running it on low power yeah. and i think a lot of i've seen a lot of photographers move towards full frame cameras over time yep. and on a full frame camera you're often forcing to be using more closed apertures and therefore you need more flash power and so some of those older flash guns are getting hammered out if you do a lot of big animal photography where yep. maybe you've got bigger subjects slightly further away often in bright conditions you're yep. again shooting a lot more at high power often doing repetitive shooting because you want to get the shark as it comes past whereas if you're just shooting soft corals or something, you know, there's no rush to take lots of pictures in a hurry. Yeah. Um, I think those things can help age your flash guns more. So the type of photography you do, the type of camera you do, all these things can maybe put more stress on your flash guns and require you as a photographer to change them more regularly than maybe someone else who only does cold water diving. Their flash guns are always at low power because it's either macro or low light, wide, close focus, wide angle. Yeah. And their flash guns are likely to, to last a lot longer. So what what are the things I think I think all the strobe manufacturers should be united in saying that generally the continuous firing is a real is is what really damages strobes. So so any opportunity you have to you know if you have got a series of shots because you've got an action sequence or something going on, but if you've got the opportunity to break it, let the strobes cool down, 
give the chance for the capacitors to cool down and then go back and shoot again will, will definitely increase the longevity of your strobe. And, and, you know, when you see burning going on on flash tubes, that's nearly always caused effectively by overheating, by, by shooting too much too fast. It's not, I mean, obviously power does come into that as well. Um, in that obviously if, if, if too much too fast and too much power is the worst combination, but as much as anything, it's actually giving it time for it to settle down in between. Mm -hmm. Something else I was going to mention, obviously we mentioned, well, we sort of touched on side of your compatibility when you're talking about older strobes. Um, this is something that I think, you know, cameras are changing, TTL protocols are undoubtedly going to change in some form, um, this kind of thing. So so I, I, one of the things obviously we're seeing now is the option of being able to upgrade a strobe via via um, apps or via uh, Bluetooth or, or various other technologies. Um, you know, some of them use a wire now and, and you can you know, upgrade. I think the idea of having upgradable firmware inside inside a strobe is a really good idea for future-proofing your strobes. You know, um, you know, if in the future there's a new function or a new uh, protocol or whatever that you want to add to it, that always opens that option. Or you change camera brand, you know, you go from Canon to Nikon, Nikon to Canon, all that kind of thing. This opens all those doors. So previously, you'd probably been pretty stuck in those sort of situations. I think that's a that's a, that's a that's a very positive thing, and, and something that fortunately some of the manufacturers are jumping on board with. And I think will 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 help you get the get the longer life out of your strobes. That's a very very good point. And I, I also think that the manufacturers have now, for for at least maybe the last decade, have been very aware of the number of photos that photographers are now taking. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think they they beefed up design as a result. Yeah, yeah. Although it is worth noticing that you know any manufacturer also does want their product not to last forever. Otherwise, you, you, you're you never going to come back and buy another one. Yeah, they want you to be happy, but they don't want it to last forever, which is a, a difficult conundrum. Um, yeah. That's a wonderful discussion. Um, thank you very much, Alex. Um, and um, Alex has been shooting, and we'll see his clear blue words from Sardinia. I've seen some on Instagram. Where, where are they, Alex? What, what's your Instagram handle again? Yeah, on Instagram, I'm Alex Mustard one on Instagram, I think. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, um, I'll, I'll do my best to share some pictures when I get a chance. I, I've seen some already, so so you've already you've already been out there, which is great. Uh, so yeah, I think I yeah I think I, I shared one of of, of 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 my wife when it was our anniversary. So yeah. <laughs> he doesn't see Instagram, so I can get away with it. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks again, Alex, um, and thanks to our sponsor for this episode, Icolite. Um, we can't make these um, these wet pixel lives without the support, so we really appreciate it. Thanks to you all for watching. Please feel free to add any comments or suggestions um, in the notes below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.